Hey everyone, so today we're going to get into the seed room and show you guys what we have going on. We had a couple of questions and seen a couple of questions about seed starting. So we're going to get in here. First, I want to show you the setup. Let me take one step back and show you what we have going on. We have that top shelf there with the uh, reef that Angie had going uh, under the lighter and it's looking pretty good. Then we have our shelf here where we start our ceilings. What we're going to do today is we're going to move those ceilings up to that top shelf and then use this for some more ceilings. We'll talk about how we had those growing with the, seed, uh, the heat mats underneath. And then that bottom shelf there, we have some miscellaneous stuff, our uh, seed starting soil, some fertilizers, and some more uh, seed growing material. But um, I'm going to go ahead and grab the coffee, and here it is because I was looking for it earlier. But we're going to go ahead and turn this camera around, talk a little bit about the lights, uh, some of the seed methods that we use, and some tips. So as we get started with this video, the first thing I want to talk about is our experience growing seeds. This is by no means any type of handbook on how to start your seeds or how to do uh, this method or that method, we're talking about our experience with growing seeds and just giving you guys some tips on what we see and what we do to prevent some of the stuff that's happening with our seeds. Before I get started though, I, I want to move this wreath here that Angie got started. I'm going to show it to you guys real quick because it absolutely looks beautiful and I think it's starting to fill out. Uh, this is that uh, rocking low sedum that she started uh, to put inside this wreath form so we can have a nice beautiful wreath for spring or summer coming up. Uh, but I'm going to move this aside because what I'm going to do is... I'm going to start grabbing some of these seed trays and transferring them up over to the top here because they're already showing some growth and I have the heat mat. So I'll get a little closer in here, but I have heat mats underneath all these trays to keep the temperature nice and heated for the, uh, the seedlings to start. And it also helps that soil um, not stay completely moist all the time. Now, another thing is what I'm going to do is I'm going to grab some of these, uh, these seedlings that either did not produce, died off, whatever the case was. Um, or in our case, you know, we, we love to have the kids help and stuff like that. So some of these uh, seedlings may have been planted a little bit deeper. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna grab the ones that aren't showing any seed growth. And I'm gonna put them in a whole separate tray here. That way I can keep that here on top of a heat mat and see if anything does come up because maybe those seeds were planted a little bit deeper. I know some that actually did die off. Those I'll throw the soil away, clean out those pots and reuse them. Um, which brings me to my first tip and that is fungus. Um, somebody asked a question of fungus. What do I do with fungus? A lot of times the cause of fungus is going to be um, not using a sterile soil or opening a bag of seed starter and leaving that bag open for a prolonged period of time, which will start to attract some type of fungus spores. Uh, another thing could be using old uh, materials for growing your seeds whether it be not properly clean, not properly washed, or old container that you use for your seedlings. Um, the humidity is a big thing too. Um, the watering, uh, too much water and not enough airflow can cause a lot of that white um, type of moldy look fungus that you see in your seed pots. And that's, again, that's the cause of too much water or not enough watering. Um, and it causes that fungus to look to grow onto your seeds. One thing I do to prevent that is when I water my ceilings, um, the question of, of watering comes up is how often do I water? And really how often I water depends on how dry my soil looks. Either I water from the bottom or I grab a spray bottle and just mist the tops of the soil. Now, when I say um, mist, I mean just a light mist because you don't want to move anything around. You don't want to disturb the roots. Um, just a light mist to keep the tops of them um, as moist as possible. All right, so I'm moving all the uh, the trays up top that have all the seedlings that have already come up. I've transferred everything that doesn't have any growth into a single tray here. Um, but I'm moving all these to the top. That way they get plenty of, uh, of light from this up here. And I can start a whole row of seedlings down at the bottom um, with some other stuff I want to grow. And then I'm just going to set this one right here right in the center because it has this grow light also. Um, now when it comes to grow lights, what I'm using is... I'm using this grow light that I did, uh, that I received a couple months ago, and it's been working great. I also have these grow lights here that I ordered from Amazon. Not the greatest grow lights as far as um, the output, but it does enough to get these seeds growing. I have some other grow lights that I'm going to use where I'm going to transfer some of this stuff into the Mars Hydro tent. You can see that right here next to me. I'm going to use that 
um, later this month when I start getting some of these seedlings that grow a little bit bigger to transfer them into there so they stay nice and, and, uh, and heated and start to put a lot more growth because the light in this guy is a little bit stronger and it's going to help it produce more of that foliage and any flowering if it needs to earlier, which I really don't want, but it's going to give enough time to live in here before I take them outside and spring starts to arrive and that sun starts to come out and these plants can start going out there. Um, so the lights, uh, it, I know it's, it's a big topic. It's a big question. What kind of lights do I use? Really, you can use um, just about any LED lights or any fluorescent bulb lights to get your seedlings going. The, the one thing I would suggest is get something powerful enough that's going to make them grow the way they need to without actually getting leggy or stretching out. And you'll be able to tell when you don't have enough output in your lights because you'll see that legginess in those ceilings and they'll just look completely way too long and not putting enough growth. They'll look elongated. You want a light that's going to be strong enough to keep those ceilings nice and stout. I mean, you can see this one. It's not leggy at all, but it's nice and stout. You can tell it's getting enough light for it to produce the way it needs to. Same thing with a lot of these. Uh, I have cucumbers here. Um, some of the tomatoes here now these are in bigger containers so they're going to look a little bit bigger than the ones i have here uh, let's say in the proven winners eco pots you can see those are growing some uh, some tomatoes as well but they're not as big because the roots are not spreading as much as these tomatoes are in these containers here all right so again the lights it's 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 going to depend like i said on the output of the light and making sure that your plants get enough light um, and not looking elongated and leggy um, another thing I want to talk about the next, the next thing I want to talk about with, uh, the ceilings is, um, the gnats. Uh, a lot of people ask us questions about gnats, how to deal with gnats. Unfortunately, uh, we haven't really dealt with that problem. We don't have a big problem with the gnats. And as I'm saying that, um, and thinking that to myself earlier, me and Angie were in here and we saw one or two gnats. Um, but it, uh, to me, it's not something to, you know, to cause a concern to have to really deal with them. Um, the one thing I did do was this here because this is uh where they're attracted to is the moist soil they're looking for that water uh, uh in the damp soil so all i did was i have some apple cider vinegar uh, a couple spoons of sugar some water and dish soap and i just set that out and again uh we really don't have too many gnats i don't even have any in here right now and i don't see many flying around but I know this will definitely attract it. And to be honest with you, I, I just happened to fall into it by chance was one thing that really attracts gnats. And cause I spent a lot of time in here and I love drinking coffee is I've left my coffee cup in here and coffee is a big gnat attractor. I, you know, I get upset because they go in my coffee, they ruin my coffee and I have to go get another cup of coffee. But if that's something you want to do daily is place a cup of coffee. Cause you know, coffee can grow uh, fungus and mold really, really quick. Um, by all means, try the coffee method, but that's nothing that I have done before. I just thought it was funny because when I did say that earlier, I had my coffee here. Gnats are attracted to coffee. Um, it's just one of those things. But I'm going to go ahead and leave these up here with these uh, seedlings that have already grown because these are the guys that are going to get watered the most. So it's going to attract um, any insects or any gnats that are going to want to come in here because I'm going to be consistently watering these plants here. Um, really not that many tips. Um, again... The best tip I can give you for starting seeds is using seed mats. I bought these on Amazon. I'll put the link in the description. Um, I think they were about 10 bucks a piece. Um, it's a good investment because I've had these for about two, three years now. Um, they're nice and warm. They keep the trays warm. And if you happen to overwater your plants, which is going to cause some of that dampening off or some of that fungus, um, this will keep it warm enough to kind of soak up or, or have some of that water evaporate. Um, but you got to keep checking on your plants to make sure they're watered enough and they're not too dry and looking like, you know, they're about to fall over because they're not getting enough water. But uh, best tip I can give you is get yourself some good heat mats that are going to keep those trays nice and warm. Now, I don't cover my seeds. I don't put a plastic covering over the seeds. I've done that method before. Um, but I think it's humid enough in here to get these seeds going. And with the heat mats, it's plenty of humidity. And as long as, like I said, you're misting them or watering your plants, they're going to get the water that they need. And they're going to produce the way they need to and start to germinate um, just like they would with a dome on top. Um, so I don't, I don't use the dome method. By all means, you can use the dome method. If you do use the dome method, once you start seeing some of those seeds germinate, um, I would say more than about 25 to 30 percent of them start germinating. You want to take those off um, of the seedlings. The rest will start to come up 
Um, I wouldn't suggest leaving them there longer because you're just going to get a lot of that moisture. It's going to keep going and going. And that's when you start getting that fungus growing and that moldy stuff looking on your plants because they don't have any time to dry out. And when your seedlings start to pop up, that's when you start getting the dampening off and those new seeds will start to die. Strawberries. Seen a lot of questions about strawberries. We just did the uh, proven winter strawberries that they sent us. They have them in seed form now. And I wanted to talk about those real quick because um, strawberries are one of those seeds that are very, very tiny and they take somewhat of a substantial amount of time to start to grow. They're not like any other seedlings where it takes anywhere from seven days to a week to start to pop up. Strawberry seeds, unfortunately, can take about seven to 21 days. So that's about two to three weeks before they even germinate. Um, again, I haven't done many strawberries. This is probably my second time doing strawberries, but I will tell you that not to worry, I'll probably show you a picture of this because I know the camera's not really going to focus on it, but it's already showing some growth. Um, I wasn't too alarmed, um, but I did start seeing a lot of comments because uh, people are trying the new um, seeds, the strawberry seeds from Fruit Winners, and you know, starting to get worried that they're not seeing anything come up. It takes time. It takes a lot of patience, especially if you're a beginner, to seed starting to have something start to grow. Um, when panic starts to set in, it's when you start overwatering, you start you know, uh, getting too worried and that can be a danger to some of your seedlings as well. But if you do have some of those strawberry seeds, please uh, just be patient. Just let them come up. They'll start to come up. And if they don't come up, just plant some more seeds. Um, it's the best thing I can tell you to do. But these strawberry seeds, like I said, they're starting to come up. They take plenty of time. Just be patient with them. Okay, so before I close this video, I did want to talk about um, the future of these videos is talking about the lights. I do want to do a video about the lights probably get more in depth with the lights because i know there's uh it's a huge topic about lights there's a lot of categories you can get into when it comes to lights uh one question i did receive about the lights so is timers do i have any timers um, i don't have any of those old school timers where you wind it or or set it on the wall what i do have is i use these amazon outlets and i just use alexa to go ahead and set a schedule of when to turn the lights on and they get about 16 hours of light through the day so I usually have it come around um, I, I think I have it set for 7 in the morning and it turns off at about 10 o'clock at night so it gets plenty of light um, I don't think they're getting too many and I don't think they're getting too little because they look absolutely great but um, this is what I'm using it's just a, a, a Amazon outlet to go ahead and use that with Alexa and go ahead and time it and I can easily tell her to turn off the lights whenever I need them off or turn them back on whenever I need it on um, but the biggest thing, again, is getting uh, in the future, talking about the ceilings a little bit more, the lighting. Um, we'll come back and do an update as, as well, probably in about a day or two, uh, when I go ahead and thin out whatever needs to be thinned out from the ceilings and talk a little bit about why do you need to thin out your seedlings um, and getting ready for transplanting outside. But um, just a quick video, guys, wanted to show you again, you don't need a huge room to do any ceilings. We have this shelf for it works just as good and we don't have a big yard so obviously we're not going to have a full wall shelf of seedlings ready to go outside some of these guys are actually going to be donated to the community here which i think it's a great idea to do because you don't want to use a buy a pack of seedlings and then just use three or four of them when you get 15 or 20 of them um, and that's another reason why you don't want to be reusing seeds from year after year because once you open that package it introduces again Going back to the fungus, it can introduce some fungus. And when you plant those seeds, that's when you start wondering why my seeds are dying. And that's because you've opened a pack and you're using it year after year. Um, so um, I just like to plant them all and get rid of the ones that I don't use. And, and I think it's a great idea to do in the community here. But that's going to do it for, for the video, guys. Just wanted to show you guys what we're doing here. Uh, if you got any questions about a future video or anything like that, please leave them in the comments down below. Um, if you haven't given this video a like, please give it a like. And if you haven't subscribed yet, please subscribe. Help us get our channel out there. We're also doing our videos in Spanish. This one, probably not so much. But if you would like to support our Spanish channel, you can go check it out at Obsesiones de Jardín. And we'll put it down in the description below as well. But again, that's going to do it for the video, guys. We'll see you in the next one.